over to Romans, Romans 8. Romans 8, 12 to 25. Consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. The creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. For the creation was subject to frustration, not by his own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know the whole creation has been groaning as in pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan. Inwardly, as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. But the hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what he already has? But we hope for what we do not yet have. We wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us. Thank you, dear. Uh, this morning, we have uh, friends who are visiting with us, and these friends of mine, some of them, we know each other for over 50 years, and others since they were born. Uh, they came to visit us from Nebraska, and they wanted to see how we are doing after they had what we are going through as a family and they said, hey, let's go and see these guys and pray with them. And so I thought, since they are my friends and they are servants of God, they are pastors in Great Plain uh, uh, Conference, I thought, let them also give us a message this morning. So I am not preaching, but one of our friends is. And before she preaches, I want to give an opportunity to those ones who are not preaching, just to say their names and who they are. And, oh, yeah, I, I don't know. I start with uh, Gadi. Come, Emma. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. My name's Emmanuel. I'm going to be a freshman. My name's Garu. I'm going to be a sixth grader. My name is Charles Kitu. I love the Lord as my personal savior. As Pastor Ishmael has uh, told you, we are serving uh, in Great Prince Conference. And uh, I'm happy to be here. Uh, we've been telling him since we came, Michigan is beautiful. Indeed, you have a beautiful state. And we are glad to worship with you this morning. We have uh, three boys, and our firstborn job is 16, but he was not we did not come with him. He had a church camp that coincided with, Bible camp, sorry, that coincided with our trip. So we dropped him at the center and we proceeded to come here. So, um, but he has been keeping good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Reverend Skater will be preaching this morning. Reverend Skater, we went to the same church back home. We attended the same Sunday school. We attended the same youth uh, group. We went with her the same school in uh, Dallas, uh, theological, I mean, uh, SMU, Southern Methodist University. And she got an appointment in Nebraska, Kansas, then Nebraska. And now she is with us. So you are welcome. This is a church that loves uh, visitors. Be free, even if you want us to if you want to preach while we are standing, we are going to do that. Even if you want us to be singing as you preach, we will be ready to do that. So be free. It's a family church. We love each other. And just feel you are in the house of the Lord. You are welcome. Let's put our hands together for our preacher this morning.
people call me Skeeter, but if you call me McKenna, I love that most because at home, they call me McKenna, and McKenna means happiness. So I'm so happy to be here this morning. I bless the Lord for his love, for his fitness in my life. As Ishmael said, we are serving in southeast Nebraska. Uh, Charles and I are serving five churches. So he's so lucky, yeah? Use him, use him. Yeah, we're serving five churches. That means we are serving five towns, yeah? Different cities. Not, somebody said they are so small, they are villages. So, yeah, so we serve in those five um, towns, and we appreciate the Lord for giving us that opportunity to just serve with the people of those five churches. Uh, we had planned to have a one-week vacation. Everything was planned, but uh, when we realized our brother uh, is going through a lot, we had to change everything and focus on coming up, up, up to this place. And uh, so far, we have enjoyed ourselves here, and uh, tomorrow we are going back. Yeah, we're going back. Our theme this morning is relationship with God through the Spirit. Relationship with God through the Spirit. And our leader this morning has read from Romans 8, 12 to 25. Let us pray. We thank you, gracious God, for your love and your mercies that are new each and every morning. The Bible says you do not gather your people in vain. I believe, God, you have a word for each one of us this morning. I pray the Lord you will speak to us in the language that we are going to understand. Thanking you, Lord, for your word that is alive and active. I pray that, Lord, your Holy Spirit who guide us this morning as we listen to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We are here this morning because as a church, we have a relationship with each other. When God created us, he created us as social beings, people who can interact here and there. And more to that, in our relationship, we have families, we have neighbors, and that means the relationship to us is very, very important. When we have relationship with each other, a relationship with God is very important important. What does that mean? A relationship with God starts with you, with me, when you realize the need of God in your life. When you admit you are a sinner before God and in faith you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. Very important. Yes, we have our relationship, but the relationship with God is very important. And that's why Paul, in this letter, Romans 8, 14 says, For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. When does this begin? I love John 1, 12. It says, for all those who believed in him, they were given power and authority to become the children of God. That's where our relationship with God starts. For all those who received him, they were given power and authority to become the children of God. 
That means when Paul talks about for all those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God, it is very true. What does that mean? Being God, a God's child means, means being led by the Spirit. It means being fruitful and purposeful in our Christian life, in making difference in our communities, in our homes. Being a child of God means that you are led by the Spirit in essential to our spiritual growth, to our effectiveness as Christians. It means making room for Jesus, for transforming power of the Holy Spirit. It means cultivating what God has given us. In our lives, I'm sorry, I like moving. I don't know how to stay together in the pulpit. I like very moving, so I move. So when we talk about being children of God, when we talk about loving God and being led by the Holy Spirit, it takes grace for us to get there. It takes grace for you to do what pertains to what the Spirit wants you to do. Point number one, for us to achieve what God has called us to do, it is important to note at least three things. Point number one, Trust in the Lord. Live a life that calls you, that demands you to do the will of God all the time. Trust in God in all what you do. Keep God in your daily life. Trust God as you make every move in your life. Hope in the Lord as you do all that. Point number two, for us to cultivate the power of God in us. Because remember, when you received God in your life, you received God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. That means you need to activate the power of the Holy Spirit spirit in you each and every day to just surrender to God and say I am here God help me to walk in your way there's no way you can do that when your faith your love in God is not consistent that means daily trusting and hoping in the Lord number two read the word of God by yourself and still with others. The church, right now, our church is struggling a, a lot. We are struggling. In Great Prince Conference, we are also struggling. We serve small churches, and there's a lot of struggle. But one thing I've realized in our church, not in this church, Ishmael, maybe in our church, Christians these days don't read the word of God. We only wait for a preacher to come and give us the word every Sunday. But how can we get ourselves up there to that level where God says, do this, where God says, I promise, do this? When you don't read the word of God, when you wait only for Sunday, just for 15 minutes to hear the word of God. If we really want to get ourselves there, familiarize yourself with the word of God. Take time. Take your Bible out of your sh sh shelf. Yeah? Read your word. Read the word. That's how God speaks to us. Join our Bible study in the church. Join a group, read the Bible together, encourage fellowship with one another so that we can get to that level. Point number three. 
prayer. Prayer is very important. And especially when we talk about our relationship with God. I bless the Lord for his leadership this morning. When he started praying. It means he understands that he is talking to God. Who is our father? I bless the Lord for the songs that we have sung this morning. God is our father. And there's no way we can be in a relationship without talking to this God, without talking to our father. We need to engage. And First Thessalonians talks about prayer without ceasing. Pray continually. Where is the church today? Are we praying? Are we talking to God? Are we putting everything and saying, God, we feel we have no energy, God. We don't understand what is happening. Remember the early church. And I want to quote um, Colossians 3.16. It says, Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalm, hymns, and songs. And I want to go to Act 4.24. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Raising our voices together in prayer for God. There's no way a church will do without prayer. Yes, you can pray at home, but praying together is very important. We are where we are today as a church because prayer is no longer in church. And then how can we be led by the Holy Spirit without prayer. It can't work. Prayer is important. Prayer opens doors. Prayer, God has promises, has promised us a lot. If you read the word of God, it has more than 365 promises. How can we claim those promises? How can we claim healing? How can we claim deliverance? How can we claim the power of God in our lives without prayer? There's no way we can do that. A Christian, somebody who loves God, needs to take time. Sit down in your house and pray. Come to church and pray. Meet with friends and pray. Prayer is very important. And my last point, as we live in this world, God has given us talents and gifts in our lives, and that means going on all the assignment, doing assignment for God. Just realizing that God has blessed you so much. You have a gift in your life that you can use to serve God. Realizing that, yes, you have a talent that you can reach out the community with. I want to say this morning that God loves you so much. I don't know what you're going through in your life this morning. I don't know what your family is going through this morning. But I want to say that we serve a mighty God. We serve a loving God who has not forgotten you. All what you need is just to realize that this God, this mighty power that we follow, it is a God who loves you. A God who is your creator. A God who changes not. The Bible says he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. A God who is so gracious. A God of promises 
And the heavenly promises in this book, it's a history book, it teaches us a lot. But the word of God is the light of our feet. As we move forward in this life, as we seek wisdom from God, let us seek him because he is so faithful. He loves us so much. As I conclude, I want to remind us that there's nothing we can do by ourselves. Sometimes, yes, we might have the energy, we might have all what it takes, but some things are behold us. We only need to maintain, to cultivate for that relationship. There's no way you can be in a relationship and you're doing nothing. You just seated. You're living a normal life. No. But at least we can try. We can try to take some moment and ask God, who are you in my life? What can you do, God? And God answers. If you are going through a sickness, to ask God, what do you want with my life? God, I need your healing. I need your power in my life. That relationship with God is so important. I love John 3.16. We all know the verse. It says, For so God loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God loves you so much. God cares for you so much. You only need to have that personal relationship with God for he cares just to believe in him to trust in him and to say God I want to receive you today I always say loving God is important is good but taking that other step of saying God I come to you today I need you in my life I accept you in my life Come and save me. Come and deliver me. I want to walk with you from today. It is very important. That day is very important. In my life, I always remember November 20th, 1994, when I said yes to the Lord. And I said, God, from today. That time I was a young girl, I said, God, from today. Everything aside, God, I want to follow you. And for those 20 plus years, I have followed the Lord. Your personal relationship with God is so important because that forms a relationship with God. And then from there, in this evil world, you can always tell the Holy Spirit to guide you. I want to say this as I finish our God is so faithful. God loves you so much. Don't give up. God loves you so much. Just keep on waiting, trusting in him, for he cares for you. He cares for you more than you can imagine. You just need that time with God, that moment with God. May the peace and the grace of God be with you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you.